Hey guys. Wait, what's going on? Why is everything black? Oh my god, I think we're being hijacked. I'm Barb. I'm Bob. And together we make out this world. Can him ride day. Go Today ahead. we're taking the route Dixie Highway from Park City, Kentucky. Our first stop is going to be the Wigwam Motel. Come along with us. Stay tuned. We're Bob and Barb. We've lived by the rules all of our lives. But in 2020, we threw that rule book out the window. We sold our home and moved full time into an RV with our cat, Amelia. And from now on, we will be living life our way. Don't you want to come travel in our world? Wow, it's such a beautiful day for a ride in the upper 60s today. So you do need a little bit of a jacket while you're driving around. All right, after we left our campground, we got on I-65 and then headed down to Route 31 West, which is Dixie Highway. That took us to the Wigwam Village where we visited a little bit. And then we headed on out of there and got on uh, 90 and that took us to the Sand Trail. The sand trail. Yeah, we took us to the dead guy. Took us to the dead guy <laughs> on the sand trail. Oh, you now know a secret that's coming up. So let's head on over to the Wigwam Village. Frank Redford is the builder of this incredible establishment that we're driving to. He was actually on vacation in Long Beach, California, and he came across a barbecue restaurant that was shaped like a concrete teepee, and it gave him an idea. I'm going to head back to Kentucky, he said, and I'm going to build something that's similar to this because I think this will be a good tourist attraction. So in 1933, he came back and he built a gas station and he built a restaurant. Yep. And it was a fabulous success. So from there, he decided to go ahead in 1935 and build the seven first initial concrete teepees as hotels. Yep. Eventually he built about 15 total and then there was one large structure that was the office and like a little museum. Those, those were built in 1937. These are located in Cave City, Kentucky. They were very close to where we were still, uh, were constructed mainly because at the time, uh, you know, in the 30s, Americans were starting to discover the highways. So they needed a place to stay and a place to eat. So that's the reason why a lot of these type of hotel chains popped up was because America was on the roll. So they were getting in their cars and getting out on the road. The big thing that we thought was neat when we got there is the neon sign is still there. Yep. And what does it say? It says, sleep and eat in a wigwam. <laughs> this one was named as wigwam number two. There's only three that are surviving in the United States or three groups, Kentucky, Arizona, and California. Originally, it consisted of uh, seven different states that had wigwams in them. You have to let us know if you've been to one or if you've seen one or stayed in one. Yeah. Or got a room key. Yeah, got a, yeah, bought a room key. So pulling up on the uh, spider, pulling up on these uh, wigwams, super cool. I mean, it's uh, you can almost take you back in time. Yeah, it's like being a kid again, you know, and in the 60s and seeing what was considered old stuff then. I mean, imagine that it's still standing in good condition now. Anybody with any age will remember that when you traveled with your folks on a two-lane highway, you saw the little hotel chains that popped up, and you still see them today, but they're kind of dying off. But you, you would get the sign that say air conditioning, color TV. So pulling up to these just took us back in time. I mean, just exactly like when you were a child, you know, you were a child in your parents' car. So. Yeah. So here we are on Dixie Highway and I don't have my microphone on so hopefully the wind noise is not going to be so bad and I was hoping that they were open because I wanted to get a keychain like an old hotel keychain which young people won't understand but I thought it would be cool I mean there is someone back there cleaning one of the rooms but there's nobody up so we are originally from Ohio and lived in Indiana so the fact that we never knew this was here was incredible so we wanted to stop by and get it on camera for you if you're in where are we at <laughs> well, this is outside of Cave City Kentucky. This is Wigwam Village number two. Cool. So now we're going to continue on Dixie Highway to see what else we can find. So now we're heading over to Lincoln's boyhood home, which is in Elizabethtown, Kentucky. And he lived here until 1816 and then he moved to the great state of Indiana, which is of course where we're from yep. originally. 
We enjoy the two lane roads on the motorcycle. I mean, you get out, you get to see these little small towns. Yeah, I mean, just the, just the way the buildings were constructed back then, you know, it's with the stone, just super cool. I mean, you got the, uh, the small hardware store, the small pharmacy, that's not a CVS or a Walgreens. So it's just really neat to see. And then the roads itself, uh, the roads in Kentucky are in pretty good shape. Spring was coming, so we were getting a lot of beautiful colors coming in of different trees. But Kentucky is just an incredibly beautiful state, you know, yeah. with all of the rock formations and... Yeah, sometimes you don't consider Kentucky being a beautiful state to ride through, but when you're out on the bike in the spring and the smells of all the florals and just the, the trees all blossoming out, it's just, just a beautiful ride. That's my favorite thing, whether we're riding on the motorcycle or even the bicycle or even hiking is the smells but yeah. i think especially on the motorcycle because when you're riding down the road you're getting incredible yeah. smells all the all the different smells whether you know you come across wildflowers or it's just a floral tree it's just just incredible my favorite thing is when we drive through pine trees and you yeah. get that really good pine scent there are some smells that aren't good on the road every now and then you get the dead animal yeah, it's like being out in the fall when you're driving and someone's burning leaves and you get that first smell of the leaves, it's just incredible. Well now I think we're going to go, we're arriving here at Mammoth Cave, um, one of the little trails that they've got here and we're going to check out this sand trail. Cool. So Bob. Tell us a little bit about this sand cave trail we're going on. Well, Mr. Floyd got stuck in there in 1925, and apparently several attempts from his family, they dropped electric light down there to get him to keep him warm. Yep. The guardsmen were called in. They tried to, and, to uh, get him untrapped, and I guess Mr. Floyd has spent his last moments in the cave. And he's still there, his, our understanding, because the it collapsed on top of him. So it's a little creepy, but we're going to yeah. go check out this. We never do know anything about that history. Yeah, it's we not. We just wanted to walk down this small trail to uh, yeah. see some beauty. Because the sand cave is supposed to be kind of neat, and it can start in Virginia and head all the way over to here. Yeah. Um, but the part of the trail here is only what? It's only a tenth of a mile. Tenth of a mile, and that is Floyd Collins right there. I guess he sort of fell in, and uh, yeah, I called him Mister. Mister. Uh, oh no, that's okay. But uh, <laughs> he fell in sixty feet. They couldn't retrieve him. 1925 so yeah he was a big cave explorer i guess back in the day and then the news focused on this area so they tell you to stick to the trail not to go off which maybe is good advice yeah. <laughs> mr floyd grab you at your leg <laughs> um so obviously you have a handicap accessible trail that you can go on here that was creepy whatever that noise was so we will take you back in this trail and See hopefully what we cannot find. <laughs> yes. One thing about the Mammoth Cave region, if you like to hike and be in this uh, early spring, it is just gorgeous. Drawn my newspaper accounts an estimated crowd of 10,000 people, can you imagine, gathered to see what the hell was going to happen to Floyd Collins. Yep. People have not changed. <laughs> yeah. The only difference is they had probably got excavators out here at 60 feet. They'd have yeah. Dug, they'd Scooped him out. Collins out of the ground. I mean, if you can get Jessica out of the well, you can get Mr. Collins out of the ground. Ugh. This is a very simple trail, <clears throat> a elevated uh, boardwalk. Yeah. Nice uh, laid down wood here. Well, it's not even wood. It's new, yeah, it's that good stuff. Yeah. The good stuff that doesn't rot. This area is known for caves. I was looking into it. What? What? Where's all the pictures of the people being inside the cave? So, well, I, I want to go inside of there. Yeah. 
I mean, they got a trail that comes down there, but it doesn't go down. Right, so you have to climb down now. So, maybe we're going to try to walk around a little bit. Shall we see if we can walk around it? We can probably get to that side over there, but I don't want to really climb down. Yeah, let's see what we can do anyway. We're going to see what we can do. We're going beyond the... Yeah. And we usually like... All right, we started up there on the <coughs> overhang, but of course... We wanted to explore a little bit to get down the cave, so we walked around. There's Barb up there. We're coming down. Her phone's, her phone's acting up. She didn't charge her sports cam last night, so now it's up to Bob, which is scary. So then we're, we circle around. We can look into the cave there. Let's get Barbie down Barb's here. Barb's not in it. She's an explorer, but. She's a junior explorer. Yeah. Oh, there's just wood. Okay. So now we'll show you the now we'll show you the platform up there. Hi, Grandma. So that's where that's we were. Where. And now we're down in the cave. Which is pretty cool. Who don't wanna who don't wanna be down in the cave? Well you can feel the cool air coming out of here. Yeah, this is all caved off. Yeah, that's probably where it collapsed. He was probably back in one of these areas. Yeah, I'm sure he climbed back into one of them corners. And... Yeah. yeah, this is like the picture is going on. Yeah, this is... It would be kind of fun if it wasn't creepy. This looks like ice almost. It's cold. It's cold, yeah, it's frosted. So this is down inside the cave. Ooh. That's pretty cool. People have been up there and you can see the footprints, I guess. Yep, I can hear water dripping back in there. Yeah, and down there and up in there. Pretty darn cool. So I have you guys all to myself for once, which is exciting. I'm a Can-Am writer and I'm a female and I'm riding on the back with my husband and I simply love it. But it doesn't matter if you're the driver or you're the writer. It's the fact that you're out there and you're riding and you're living and you're enjoying yourself. So I highly recommend that no matter where you live, what you're doing, if you can get out, get out, explore, open your mind, let the stress fade away. I mean, what's important is making sure that you're healthy and happy in your life because life is so short. So do I recommend this trail? It's kind of a corny trail, but yeah, I recommend it because who doesn't need corny and zany in their life? <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for, for sharing Hannah's World with us. us. So I hope that you like our videos. Please give us a thumbs up. Please, please smash up that uh, notification bell because you never know what Hannah's World is going to be doing and when. Click the comments because Bob likes you to comment. He likes to know what you guys are thinking and I love responding to you guys. And also subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Share with your friends. Let them know, hey, this is where it is. Be a traveler in their world. So remember, we are Hedis World. Come travel in our world. Bye.